When we're working in MuseScore, we're going to spend most of our time here, which is the main score editing window. And it's from here that we can do most of the, the main things that we need to do with scores. And the, the menu at the top here kind of gives us an indication of what those things are likely to be. What I really like about the top bar menu here in MuseScore is that if there's ever a button that we're unsure about, all we need to do is hover our mouse over that button and it will tell us not only what that button does, but also what the keyboard shortcut is to do that action in a different way. So make that action with the keyboard. And sometimes when we're working on projects, learning a few keyboard shortcuts for the software that we're using can save so much time because it can just save us having to go and find the right button and click on it. Uh, one really good example of that is this save option here, the save score to file. Now we could always obviously at any point go and get the mouse and click on this button. But just learning the keyboard shortcut of Command S or Control S if you're on a PC will save your work for you. And it's almost worth getting into the habit whenever you're working on a score in MuseScore just to be doing Command S, Control S all the time, every, every few minutes, just so that you never find yourself in that situation where you've lost that amazing piece of work that you've done because your computer crashed or something went wrong. So other things we can do from this top menu is start a new document and actually that will take us through the start center create new score process that we were just looking at and that's command N. Command O will open a file from our selection of scores that we've already saved and control P is to print the score and of course printing parts off for musicians is often something we'll need to use MuseScore for. Two other buttons that are up here that are very important and things that I wish existed in real life are the undo button and you should be familiar with undo if you've ever worked with a word processing program. If you want to undo the last couple of steps that you've, you've done, perhaps you've made a mistake and you'd like to go back, you can use this button up here or do Command Z or Control Z to move back through the steps that you made to get to the position you're currently in. And the opposite is also true. So if you've made some steps backwards and you want to actually step forwards, you can do Command Shift Z or click this button up here and that will move you back forwards towards your most advanced version of the score. Now, if only life had an undo and a redo button, everything would be so much easier. Another thing that's really important up here in our top bar menu is the zoom level and this can help us go right into detail of a score or come right the way out and see things from a, a zoomed out position. And if we drop this menu down we can see all the different levels of zoom that are set are suggested for us maybe. We can also type any number in here that we want and get that level of zoom. I often like to choose this page width option and what that does is it makes my composition fill the whole screen. And that can be very helpful just for working on ideas and things like that. While we're probably going to make use of almost all these buttons in due course, there's a few more that it's worth learning about right now. And these are the buttons that relate to the playback functions in MuseScore because MuseScore is totally amazing compared with handwritten music in that it can play our music back to us, something that dots on a piece of paper could never do. And so by clicking the play button or hitting space, that's the space bar, we can see this gray um, square moving across our score. Now, because there's nothing here at the moment, we're not hearing any sound. But once I've written some notes into my score, I'll be able to click anywhere in the score and press play and I'll be able to hear what that music sounds like. And that is an incredibly powerful tool when we're working on compositions and we think, oh, should I make that instrument play that note? Okay, how does that sound? Oh yeah, that sounds quite good. And, and often you can really tell where the mistakes are in your score if you've written some weird harmony or something that doesn't quite sound right. You can find all of that stuff out by pressing space and hearing your music played back to you. Now, of course, with an empty score, hearing the playback isn't that amazing. So we're going to need to input some notes onto our score. And that's what we're going to look at next.